Now I'm inviting uh, the second uh, presentation. The second presentation will be delivered by the Aydın Aydıngün, Şengül Aydıngün, Arkanunis. The title of the speech will be Discovery of the Antique Harbors West of Istanbul. I'm inviting the speaker. Hello. Hello. Hello, I would like to uh, welcome to all those following the session. Now I will try the hurdle of this technology. Let me try to open my presentation. Do you see presentation, first page? Hello. Not now. Yes, okay. Now it's okay. Okay, now just a couple of words of entry. Uh, we all live in the in our houses and from different parts of the world. It is very interesting. Uh, the adoption of these new symposium techniques reminds me the early years of aviation of 100 years ago, you know, full of excitement and full of crashes. So we have both of them together. OK, now the, pre the presentation is on. Istanbul Prehistoric Research we call it ITA with its Turkish acronym, started its surveys during the season of 2007 under the leadership of Dr. Şengül Aydıngül. Soon it became clear that the western part of Istanbul is as untouched from the archaeological point of view as the most remote parts of the country. As a result, the scientific team enlarged its scope from mid-Paleolithic up until the Second World War remains. That's why these antique harbors, probably with histories going back to prehistoric times, were researched and published by ITA project team. So you see uh, Istanbul map from Google Earth. And we discovered or localized six new uh, harbor around Istanbul, the western part. Now we are Batonia. Batonia is a special place for us because since uh, 11 years, under the uh, leadership of Dr. Shangri Lading, we are uh, excavating there. So we have more information about this, uh, what is in the harbors of Batonea. Everything is in this uh, Firuzköy Peninsula and in the southern tip, the Great Harbor. As you see, it is very pointed and, and this uh, man-made big levee or what is remained from the levee. And there's a lighthouse within the sea or within the lake and for the sea at the time. And there's in the north, there's a small harbor. In the first years of survey, we made extensive uh, research in the tip of the peninsula in the uh, big harbor. And uh, the left hand side picture is underwater picture from this uh, lighthouse, which shows two square buildings with two different phases. And this is small harbor, what we call small harbor, with a connecting Roman road to the main marketplace, which is quite big inside. And a small harbor from aerial photo and a nearby photograph. But, uh, what we discovered mainly was late Roman and Byzantine buildings. But in a two or three very small test trench, we, when we got deeper, so we found this in the left hand side, lots of Hittite type of pictures and ceramics. And the right hand side, one single piece of uh, Cypriot ware from uh, mid uh, second millennium BC. And also there was West Balkan and the Mycenaean and uh, there was some very interesting stuff, and also there was lots of uh, tin, the uh, metal of tin from distant places. So, so what we see is uh, about four kilometers long of uh, coastal walls, which have lots of buildings of protruding to the sea or lake uh, for today. And this shows that there's a huge uh, infrastructure for harbor facilities. Now we go to West Atira. Atira is the next uh, uh, lake, Lagoon Lake in Bükçek Mej Lagoon Lake. We know from the text that there, was, there must be a harbor in Atira and just we try to localize in, in this place. But unfortunately, the place is very much disturbed because of the construction of, in 1980s of a new modern dam, turning Bükçek Mej Lake to a freshwater reservoir, which now extends its uh, uh, size to twice of its original size. But thanks to, to dry years, 2014 was one of them, sometimes the lakes become much smaller and just showing us all these uh, remains of the architectural elements. As you see these monograms, with, uh, there were some sizable buildings and there was lots of 
quite in good conditions, uh, small findings and some uh, ceramics from the seabed. Episcopia is from, again, from the same uh, lake, Bifshek Major Lake, it's the northwest corner of this uh, same lake. Uh, it is not a, a, a harbor itself, but it's a, some uh, garrison with, with a castle, which sometimes now within the, the, the sea, the lake, the water, or sometimes in, in the land, but it was always close to the riverine system or, and uh, this uh, lake system. And we, we know that it, it has it had some uh, small harbor facilities, it is for the supply and uh, of the gar garrison living there. And, it, it, and there was a rich surface finding also, and uh, for a big sizable uh, establishment. And now we go to Angurina. Angurina is really a perfect finding of our team in the early 2010 years. This picture is taken from Google Earth from two, 2013. Unfortunately, Angurina was existing at this time, but today it doesn't. And at those days, the picture, uh, this picture shows big buildings and some small findings and some bricks with stamps. And these are drawings made by our team showing that it's a kind of harbor, but it is mostly uh, shipyards. And the below pictures show what was it uh, looked like at, at those days. Uh, it was a shipyard because there was a huge forest, as we know, very close by, and also some big forests, which uh, all the timber can be brought with uh, some uh, sea lane or river lanes. Now we go to more west, Selim Pasha. It's the Selim Pasha Hook is a mount, the only one almost untouched uh, in the west of Istanbul. It's a quite big one, and it was much bigger previously, but uh, you know, the seaside development just uh, took more than half of it. But the remaining part, the highest part, it looks like a sm small uh, Bronze Age or earlier time establishment or, or settlement, with, and uh, the higher part is still untouched. And from the sea, it looks like that. And here we, we are able to see some early Bronze Age one period ceramics up until the Hellenistic times. And after Hellenistic time, it, it is not used. Philea is uh, some, it, it's a harbor that when we are studying the maps and uh, some uh, commercial activity, we think that there must be a harbor there because it is the only one uh, protected from the Northeastern uh, winds of Istanbul, Poyraz, which is very important means. And this only protected area from the, in the hundreds, more than hundred kilometers of uh, this coast of uh, Black Sea. And what we, I was proposing that it is a counterpart of Batonia Harbor and the, all the ship, uh, all, all the goods coming from south, from Asian or Mediterranean was coming to uh, Batonia and with a small land transport was going to Karabun and just they were continuing to their destination in Black Sea and maybe in uh, Central Europe, thanks to Danube and other river system. And this is what is seen today. Some, uh, and also, as, as you see in the left-hand side picture, there are lots of institute the ceramics from different periods. The upper ones, these two pieces are from late Calcolithic, early, early Bronze Age one. Uh, the lower ones are from Iron Age, which is this type of uh, ceramics is very, very well known from this area. We've encountered quite a lot. And they are from Roman times and they are from Byzant Byzantine times. And the underwater pictures are, shows us clean, clean cut stones, which shows that there was some infrastructure in the sea also, not only in land side. Now, the last one we go to Moromolos here. Uh, this is written in the text, but we discovered during a survey we made to the northern part of Bosphorus and it is here you can see that and you see this uh, remain idea they are just on the remains because we are not able to make any survey in the land side these walls and you see the wall again there were two one two herons there was like that uh, face to each other one in Anatolian side I mean the Asiatic side the other one is this one this uh, European side and there was a chain uh, iron chain in between them uh, it was just to control, in the Byzantine time, to control the entrance of Bosphorus. And uh, during that date, we made also side scan sonar, thanks to Mr. Dr. Hakan and his team. And we were able to see some structures and some uh, settle, not settle, but some, some structures, uh, active structures inside the water as well. So it was a short, as short as possible. Thanks for watching.
thank you very much for your impressive presentation.